is the scale of the Isaac Rankin. What have you done to support him and what sort of mindset was he in after the, after the abuse that he got? I can't talk through his mindset, um, but I can tell you we've put everything, every support we can around him. So he's got full support of everyone at the footy club, players, staff. Um, you know, we're, we're right there for him and, um, and behind him we'll make sure that he's OK. He's, um, he's holding up well. Will he play again for Carlson on Thursday night? Yes, he will. Yep, everything going well. We've still got a, obviously a, another session tomorrow, which is you know, pretty much forms a captain's run as such. But, um, yeah, everything going well, he'll play. So there's no concerns, I guess, over any effect it might have on him, like mind, mindset-wise, anything like that, I guess? No, look, and again, I, I don't want to speak for Isaac. Um, I can only speak about the support that's there for him um, and that, you know, he's looking forward to playing on, on Thursday night, everything going well. Playing footy be a bit therapeutic for him, sort of, with yeah. Jamar, the way that he was able to sort of exercise his demons to an extent, do you think that's going to be good? Uh, again, yeah, I can't comment on how he's going to feel about that, but I do know he loves footy. I know he loves a big stage, and Thursday night will be a big stage. So he's been in some, you know, some good form. He's playing great footy. He's enjoying playing with his teammates. So yeah, you you might be right. What Maybe have, getting out there's a good thing. What have you experienced since he's been at the club and just talk about the character and what you've seen from that young man? Well, I was lucky enough to meet him before he arrived, and you know, saw him through the draft. So we we know he's of the highest character. Fantastic young human being, uh, fits in well to our group and added to our culture the moment he arrived. And this is this is home for Isaac. So, you know, when you when you spoke when we were able to speak to him after a week or so of being back, it was like, how are you going? You know, is he settling in well? Is, is everyone welcoming you? And he's like, mate, I'm home. I'm, I'm back home. Big smile on his face. So, it's nice for him to be back in back in SA with family and friends, and and he's got a lot of friends around this footy club. Matt, what was your reaction when you were told that Isaac had received that message? Uh, disappointment. Um, you know, I, my, I can talk about my feelings. I think it's a, just a cowardly act. It was targeted. It's just someone who's trying to trying to hurt. Um, you know, I, I see it as it's not really a person as such. It's you know someone sitting behind a keyboard and using that as a, a way to screen themselves away. But yeah, really disappointed. Really disappointed. Do you, uh, we'll work through it. Do you despair, Matthew, that it keeps happening? Um, Oh, I do, but I also factor in, you know, if someone's going to the time of covering up their identity, it's not an actual account, it's never been used, it's, to me, that's, um, that's a sign that we're not actually dealing with a human being here, we're dealing with someone who's just trying to be divisive. What were your conversations like with Isaac? How did that start when you were, you were told that he'd received a message? What were the first conversations you had with him? My only thing with Isaac was putting an arm around him and saying, are you okay? That was it. What did he say? He just nodded. You had a group meeting yesterday with the boys just to support Isaac. How was he feeling yeah. after that? And how did that group meeting go? Uh, again, I, I can't speak for Isaac on how he's feeling, but I know what he's got is 100% support from everyone at the footy club. And so, you know, that's the best we can do for him at the moment. And as we said before, maybe getting out and, and having a game of football might help him with that. What sort of impact did it have on the group as a whole? Uh, we're, we're still working our way through that, but I know the, the group, well, some, some things like this can bond you. You know, the group come together and we're able to show our support and say that we're all here for him. Do you believe this is still going on? Like, any vets experience this time and time again, now we're here again, 20, 20, Yeah, yeah, I, look, I think there's been incredible improvement in this area. I think there's a much better understanding. I think people are more educated around the area, but as I said, this, this is a, a, an unusual one where you know, this is targeted, it's completely set up, it's an account that, anyway, we've talked through the detail. We've probably talked about it enough, haven't we? Oh, well, Darcy, did play Yeah, Darcy's got to get through Wednesday, um, but he's progressed really well. He's, he's ticked all the boxes to this point. Um, I don't want, to, don't want to get ahead of that one, just want to make sure he's okay. Again, I've used the term, I've, I've spoken to him daily and just checking his progress and he's electric, he thinks. But, um, we want to make sure that he is electric on Thursday night, so we'll, we'll check that off at uh, the session tomorrow. Will Sam Barry come back through the session, or are you expecting him to play? Um, we haven't decided that one yet. We've, um, yeah, it's an interesting week because a short break. There's a fair bit of fatigue around, but our guys have recovered re really well in the last 24 hours. Um, yeah, we'd normally get up for a main session tomorrow, 
So with that extra 24 hours, again, our guys, they'll be ready to go. Um, but we haven't seen many of these five-day breaks, so it's, it's an interesting experiment for us. We've got a number of players uh, for different reasons that are now available that are a little fresher than those guys who played on the weekend. Um, you know, McAdam's available for selection back from suspension, so too is Pedler. Uh, Sam Berry was, was part of our management program going through and a little bit of form with that. So we'll, um, we'll sit down in match committee today, but that won't be locked away. We'll have to probably put a squad together first thing tomorrow morning. You've been how impressive, I guess, your forward line was against Fremantle, you know, players like Ned coming in. Are there going to be unlo some unlucky players if you do decide to bring back Luke and Shane and Darcy in the forward line? Yeah, there'll be some players that are that are in good form. That if we do decide to go down that path, that will be extremely stiff. You know, when you talk about selection, but that's that's why we are where we're at. We've got a, um, a squad that's performing really well. We've brought in, you know, players to, to play roles, and and those players that have come in have, have played at the highest level, and their form from SANFL has followed through. So it's been really pleasing. That pressure from below, but and then the performance that they've brought. Um, when their opportunity has shown itself has been really pleasing for us. So, you know, Scholl's been able to hold his spot inside. Chase Jones, I thought, on the weekend was, you know, a really strong game from Chase. Um, and then McHenry on the weekend would have been one of his best games at AFL level. So these guys deserve to play at the level, but, you know, when a squad's playing as, as well as our group are and they're, they're confident at the moment, you know, we understand that form's fickle and we know that things can change quickly. So we've been... At the bottom of the roller coaster at the moment, we're going to ride that confidence, uh, keep that belief in our group. But we understand it. You know, we go up against a very good side this weekend. We're, we're lucky to have so many players in, in good form and available for selection. What would the uh, triple threat up for with Riley in good form the last couple of weeks? Darcy potentially coming back in and Tex together. Is that an exciting prospect for you? Uh, yeah, we've seen that. We've seen that before. Um, have the guys been in the form? We'll, we'll have to see how Darcy comes back as well if he makes sure he's okay to play firstly. But um, yeah, it's quite exciting for our group to see how those guys go. Um, you know, there's a lot more to that though. There's a balance of what you want to play ahead of the ball as well. You know, there's, there's a defensive side to the game, transition that we have to look at also. But Riley's been chopping out in the ruck as well, you know, to give Riley O'Brien a rest uh, and be our second ruck. So he's an important part with that. Carlton Keys got ten between them on Good Friday. Yeah. Are you concocting something to curtail them? Yeah, yeah, we're going to play twelve backs. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, watching that play out was you know, kind of scary, but that's part of the challenge. When you come up against the best sides, which Carlton are, um, you know, you, you're going to have some challenges when it comes to matchups and and how you get that done. I don't think it's one that you you're going to be able to get done one on one. You know, you know that's going to be a challenge. They're, they're very, very good in the air. I think you know, that's one of the areas they've dominated so far this season. Um, so we'll have our work cut out for us there. Is that okay? He's subbed out during the game. Sorry. Jordan okay? Yeah, Jordan's fine. Yeah, Jordan's got some, some soreness, but we, uh, we made that decision for an, from an impact point of view on the day. Um, we also looked at um, th this Thursday night as well when we made that decision um, on the weekend. and. Yeah, we didn't want to take any more risk with butts. We also had a, a player ready to come on and impact through the midfield, so um, it was one we went to. Do you, um, sorry, did you, you talk about the Thursday night audience, what it means? Do the players talk about that? You know, the, the fact that mm -hmm. first time I think since July 2021 you'll be on a, a free-to-air game across the country. Does that have any impact? And does it get brought up? Um, we haven't spoken about it as yet, but there's no doubt we'll talk through that, the challenges that come with it. You know, it's a big stage, it's the ability to perform. We've, we've actually um, probably let ourselves down once or twice over the last two or three years, you know, a young group getting in that situation. So we'd like to think we've learned from those. Um, but we also know when you play these games, you're playing against sides that are sitting in the top four. Um, and so the challenge rises, the pressure rises. And, you know, we've, we'd like to think we're doing a lot of work on being able to handle that pressure been able to perform at, at a similar level and, and not drop away. You know, it's this consistency conversation again. You know, yes, we're confident, but we understand the, the form is fickle, as I mentioned. Um, and the challenge for us is, is to show we can you know, keep our performance at a high level. Does Carlton's, I guess, attacking Arsenal, does that mean you maybe look at Brent, um, shifting Jordan Dawson back to defence or will he remain in the midfield? Um, yeah, great question. We. We'd like to keep Geordie up around the footy. We, we feel like it balances our group out really well. Uh, but in saying that, 
we, we do have a lot of respect. You know, we've got to counter what the opposition bring, um, and they bring you know some potency ahead of the ball. So again, match committee will, will help us with that and what the balance of our side looks like. But um, as I said, Geordie's, Geordie's ability to play both you know, is a real advantage for us, but we'd, we'd probably like to keep him up around the midfield if we could. So five-day break, you mentioned you know, that you've got to be aware of fatigue, um, squat depth. Do you have an idea of how many unforced changes you might make? Um, the well, there's so many scenarios that have played out, and then that's only in my head. Mm. Let alone sitting down with match committee and high performance, talking through where our group's at. You know, we've got a number that we'll keep a close eye on and how they perform tomorrow. Mm. Um, so we'll have a we'll have a re reasonably large squad that we'll have ready for selection tomorrow, sort of mid morning, mm. um, and we'll make some decisions, lock those in tomorrow. Whereas this afternoon will be more about okay, what if scenarios. Um, yeah, it's an interesting spot to. Being, but a really good one. It's a it's a hard one as a as a coach to you know select a side when you've got to go to a player who's in, in good form and tell them that they're not going to be playing. But I'd rather have that that problem than the other one. Nixie, how's Paddy Pineal? Sorry, recovering from concussion. Yeah, Paddy's done really well. It took him probably the extra day. Um, everyone goes through protocols at a different speed. Um, he wasn't available last week, but he's in. Yeah, he's in a really good space at the moment. He's recovered well and he's available for selection. Did you see Paddy McCartney? I guess the Paddy McCartney on Saturday. I mean, as a coach, was it quite a stress in a seat? Um, well, n not just as a coach. It was yeah. It was uh, it was a hard one to watch, and um, that's why we're we're doing what we're doing in the game. You know, ultimately, player welfare is number one. It's what what we're all trying to do, and it's hard because. We've been so used to certain rules and certain ways we play the game, you know, when, especially when it comes to tackling and bumping. And um, but I think we're now becoming a little more educated around concussion. There's still a long way to go, but we understand that um, you know the dangers that come with it. Um, so we don't want to take any risks. And it was, it was, yeah, it was hard to watch. Have you told your players that um, it looks like the outfield's going to crack down on delivery, rushing behind based on that point out in Sydney? Have you kind of warned them a little bit? Or? <laughs> Actually, can you write that down? I'm glad, I'm glad you went there. We, we will talk through that. I'm, I need to get a little bit more clarity around exactly what that was paid for. But we will chat through that. How much of a change or how much of a shift has it been for you just as a former player who played through mm. the era where you just you know, got whacked in the head and you got on with it to where things are now as a senior coach? You can tell, can you, that I was whacked? <laughs> <laughs> what was the question again? <laughs> um, it's a challenge, to be honest, you know, because we've, we've had a couple of guys rubbed out. Um, you know, to have the conversation with them about what was acceptable two years ago or a year ago and what isn't now, that's, that's what, what's not acceptable now, it's, it's challenging. Um, ultimately, any, anything that, that puts a player in danger with, with their head striking the ground or you striking the head, then we've got to take it out. And so I think we're doing the right thing. We're going down the right path. But the challenge with that is, you know, we're making decisions at a tribunal on, on slow motion, an ultra slow motion, whereas mm -hmm. a player makes a decision, in, you know, in a split second. So uh, we'll keep working through it, but we're doing it for the right reason. Now, do you mind if I just ask one more about Isaac? Just what your advice to him was when you, you know, when, when you did talk to him, you said you wrap around around him and you condemn the attack. But what was your advice to him on how to deal with it? I didn't give him any advice. I there. I, no, no I, I didn't feel it was appropriate. Um, I just made sure he knew I was there for him. Yeah. Yep. Just, on just, one, just one for news quickly. Um, how excited is it to fly the flag for SA, open up the other round? Um, and how mm. much do you hope we can retain it for years to come? Yeah, well, it's exciting. It's nice to walk in this room and see a lot of people. I know there's so many people from interstate that have come into South Australia. So for us to be able to show off what we know is a, you know, a beautiful state, we might get a bit of flack from from other states, but when people come to this state, they realise how how beautiful it is and what we've got, you know, from a, a point of view of where you can get out to, get out to our wineries, get out, enjoy yourselves, um, make sure you look at Adelaide. Hopefully the weather holds out, but from our point of view, we're just excited to be able to kick it all off on Thursday night. Is there any senior coach kind of catch up? No, no, we don't really like each other much. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was a joke. That was a joke. <laughs> no, there's not. No, I haven't arranged to catch up with anyone. You like the fact that you guys get to you get to open the round and you 
come in yeah. in winning form, you can sort of set the time on the national stage? Yes, that's the pressure part that, that we're, we're looking forward to. We're, we're looking forward to getting a gauge on where we're at. We've, we've done a lot of work. Um, yeah, we feel confident, but we also understand the game and the challenges that come with, especially a big Thursday night hit out. Uh, but our guys are really, they're, they're excited. It's a, um, it's a short week, but I know they can't wait for Thursday night. Can you digest much of the media? Do you, do you read a lot of them? Social media or the media? No, media. Pretty media. Uh, probably not as much as many. I, I find we, we sort of work on what we're doing in-house and there's a fair bit of noise out there. Um, I get a, a, I got respect for the media and um, and its role in in what we do in the game. Um, so yeah, I don't ignore it, but there's a lot of media that, or probably more social media that I don't, I definitely don't follow. In fact, I've moved on pretty quickly when I got this job. Yeah. The reason I ask, it seems to be a lot, lot more people talking about Adelaide and the two two silvers from the, you know, the website saying it gets a sense that the wider community is starting to believe in the pros now. Do you get that sense as well? Um, no, it doesn't. It doesn't bother me. I mean, we've we've look, we've we've gone through some really tough times in the last two or three years. Uh, but right throughout that, and this is where you sort of, I guess you don't listen to too much of the noise. We, we've shown development right the way through. Now, you know, we finish last, and then we you know we we come up and win seven or eight games, and then we win slightly more than that. We, we're not fighting for finals in those periods, but we're definitely developing as a group. We we got incredible staff. Um, you know, I've, I've mentioned our staff with Mickey Godden, who coaches our reserves, and Marco Bello, who's he's, just go back and look at his history and you know, well, I guess his success in sport. Chelsea Randall's now come on board and brings an unbelievably different dynamic to what we had. So, so the development part of what we're doing is, is progressing really well. Sometimes you don't see it from a win-loss point of view, but we can see it from inside the four walls. So. You know, that's the form we're in at the moment is really good form, and form can fluctuate up and down. But um, our group are confident that they're improving. You know, we've got players not playing at the moment that are in their best form of their careers, or they're in the SNFL. And that's a really good sign for us. How impressed have you been with Max Michael and his staff for his career? I've got to be careful because Laddie gets jealous when I talk about Max as my new son. <laughs> um, Oh, I, look, I, I love the way he plays his footy. You know, he's a, he's a very balanced, solid footballer at four games. There's still, there's still so much to work on, and that's, that's the most exciting part. He's still, still got so much more upside, but to, to see the roles that he's playing for us over you know, these first four rounds of the season and the, the fact that he's doing those roles really well at, at the highest level is, is um, it's a real positive for the footy club yeah, and for him. All good, guys? Thanks, guys.